Well, good evening and thank you for joining us for Crempton News at 5. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. Well, today, Kettle Falls students and staff had a choice to walk into their schools without a mask. That is after the school board voted last night to make masks optional for students and for staff. But that action does not come without consequences. So this morning, the district did receive a warning from the Washington State Superintendent of Public Instruction. Crempton News' Janelle Finch spoke with the Kettle Falls Superintendent about what the district is planning to do next. Janelle? Mark and Whitney, that warning says the district has 20 days to comply with state masking laws or the state will withhold school funding. The district says it prepared for the warning and its potential consequences. Kettle Falls Superintendent Michael Olson says the district can afford to lose state funding. Financially, Kettle Falls School District is, has, has done a, a good job of maintaining a healthy cash reserve that, that would allow us to keep our doors open um, if apportionment was withheld. According to the state, the district has until March 7th to comply with Washington mask mandates. Right now, indoor masking is required for all K through 12 students, staff and visitors, regardless of vaccination status. If the district does not reverse the decision, the state can withhold monthly funding until the district is back in compliance. Superintendent Olson says state funding is about 1 million per month. Say withholding funds, they're not, they're not penalizing us, they are just holding our apportionment. As soon as we get back in compliance, whether that's because Governor Inslee is no longer requiring masks or because we put masks up back on, um, we get that apportionment back. The letter said in part, you are aware that Stevens County has had over 8,000 COVID cases, 500 plus hospitalizations, and tragically 120 plus deaths since the start of the pandemic. Stevens County remains the county with the lowest community vaccination rate in the state of Washington. The letter went on to say, I am confident that without masking in schools and in our communities, especially before vaccines were widely available, the loss of life in your county would have been much worse. Superintendent Olson says the board's decision addresses community concerns around mental health and social interaction for students. Superintendent Olson says community members felt their parental rights were being violated, violated with the mask mandate in school. Currently, the uh, Kettle Falls uh, parents are out or they were out earlier today hosting what they call a celebration rally to thank the board for their vote last night. I'll send it over to Kyle Simchuk, who's been there all evening. Kyle. Well, yeah, Janelle, that group of parents, students, even grandparents, they packed up about an hour ago. They were holding signs thanking school board members and getting a lot of support from the cars, trucks, even school buses driving by here. Uh, honking their horns, showing their support. Now, this was the first day that masks were optional at all Kettle Falls schools for teachers and students. Many parents feel the governor's mandate was far overreaching and they weren't willing to wait any longer, even if that means losing out on some state funding. It's great. Everyone is just super happy. It was, um, yeah, e teachers, you know, less management issues for them. It's just smiling and Good normal day. The kids is more important than the money, and we've been trying to convey that for two years now. And uh, we got some new blood on the school board, and it paid off for us because uh, we had to start small. We had to start in our in our community here, so that's what we did. We feel like we're making strides in the right direction. And the state superintendent sent the district an official notice saying they must take corrective action by March, or they could lose out on some state funding, but. Again, like you just heard parents here telling us that their kids are more important than any of that state funding. They're hoping to inspire other districts as well. Reporting live in Kettle Falls, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. And if you would like to read more about the board decision or just to hear the full interview with the Kettle Falls superintendent, you can text the word mask to 509-448-2000. We'll send it to your phone. Sticking on the topic of the coronavirus, taking a look at the current numbers in our region. The Spokane Regional Health District reporting 218 new cases today. Yesterday, SRHD reported 45 new cases, but they also said because of technical issues with the state's data reporting system, that number did not reflect the full number of cases. Again, talking about yesterday and that yesterday's missing numbers would be recorded in today's count. But back to today's data, 190 people are currently hospitalized. That is nine more people than were reported yesterday. 
Spokane County Sheriff's deputies are investigating tonight after reports of a body found on the side of the road in Spokane Valley. It was about eight this morning. Deputies got a call of an unresponsive man on East 4th Avenue. That's near South Evergreen. The caller told deputies the man was possibly hit by a car. When first responders arrived, though, they determined he was dead. The initial investigation showing the man was a victim of a hit and run. However, his cause of death will have to be officially determined by the medical examiner. Anyone with information about about the case is asked to please call crime check that numbers at the bottom of your screen. Now to a major drug bust. Spokane police recovered an estimated 40,000 fentanyl pills and nearly 20 pounds of meth last Sunday. Take a look. Police responded to a drive by shooting earlier this month near Nettleton and Rowan. They found shell casings and then saw two suspects leaving the area with a backpack and a five gallon bucket. Well, the man carrying that bucket in the backpack left the items behind. Both the men then hopped a fence and ran away. Both of those suspects are still on the loose. Police say the abandoned car had several bullet holes in it. Spokane police now working with the DEA to hopefully identify the suspects. The two month long search for a missing Cheney woman has come to an end. Logan Starbuck disappeared back in mid December of last year. Well, today we have confirmed it was her body that first responders pulled from the Spokane River last week. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley is joining us now live with details about the efforts that have been ongoing to find her. Amanda? Yeah, Mark and Whitney, 25 year old Logan Starbuck was last seen on December 17th last year. She was reported missing five days later. And just last week, Spokane fire crews recovered a body from the Spokane River near TJ Minak Bridge. I confirmed through a report from the Cheney Police Department that an autopsy identified the body as Starbuck. Now, in their investigation, Cheney police found evidence indicating that before her disappearance, Starbuck took a bus from Cheney to Spokane. The department provided us with copies of surveillance videos showing Starbuck getting on the bus. Police later learned some tourists found Starbuck's belongings on the south end of the pedestrian bridge in Riverfront Park. That's where Plan B Forensics started their search independently from law enforcement. Susan Marshall leads the organization and is a spokesperson for the Starbuck family. She told me today about what the dogs found on that search. And they also picked up where the belongings were. So there was another area along the Avisa Tower and another area on the bridge and then circled back and then they, they sit down where the belongings were actually found and they were exactly correct. She adds that a team of five people separate from law enforcement put in 100 hours and 144 miles in searching for Starbuck the week after her disappearance. Now, the Starbucks family posted about her death on social media. They say they are still working on setting a date for a service. Amanda Rowley, CREM2 News. Amanda, thank you. An update now after our exclusive CREM2 investigation yesterday on the Spokane shock. Questions swirling tonight after we revealed that the Public Facilities District still has not received a signed contract with the team. Also, still waiting on that $128,000 security bond so they can play at the arena this season. Now, the PFD says the deadline for both was 5 o'clock this evening. So just here in the last few minutes, we have confirmed that deadline passed without a signed contract and without receiving that security bond. That means the PFD is now issuing shock owner Sam Adams a default letter. We're told that Sam Adams now has five business days to submit both of those items. If he does not do that by next Wednesday, the 23rd, the Public Facilities District says the shock contract will be terminated. Now, just yesterday, the CREM2 investigators also unveiled how the PFD has struggled over the last year to get funding from team owner Sab Sam Adams. And so we sent him his contract in November, and then the payment was due December 31st, and he, did, he missed that deadline. And so he, we sent him a default letter, and then he gets five days to cure. And he did send us... Uh, he wired us money that um, did not clear the bank. So then we sent him a second default letter that um, he then sent us a check, but he told us to hold the check. And I said, we can't hold the check. We have to have the money in the bank. I'm a, I'm a public facility, right? So I'm a steward of public funds. So I can't extend credit like a, nor like a private business could. So everything has to be upfront. And so he missed that deadline. And so we terminated his agreement. 
Now, we have also confirmed an eviction notice was served at the Shock business office in downtown Spokane. The property management company says Adams missed a deadline last Friday to pay back rent and penalties. When I spoke on the phone with Sam Adams this week, he told me he's now negotiating a payment plan on that property. He also says he is absolutely moving forward with the upcoming Shock season. Coming up tonight on Creme 2 News at 6, our Creme 2 investigation continues as we talk to multiple 2020 Shock season ticket holders who say they're actually still owed money after that season was canceled because of COVID. So make sure and join us for that exclusive report tonight at 6. Let's switch gears to talk weather. It started out pretty dreary today, but ended on a sunny note. <laughs> Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry joining us. And Tom, can we expect more sunshine for the rest of the week? Well, I think we're going to see some more tomorrow. Yeah, and then we'll see changes just in time for the weekend. Right now we're at 42 degrees. You're going to see increase in clouds throughout the evening hours. And then we'll even look for a chance of a few snow flurries. Folks over in eastern Washington, or excuse me, eastern Idaho, could see a little bit of light snow in the overnight period. We'll look for a low of 28 degrees. We burn off the fog and low clouds on your Wednesday should see mostly sunny skies that will warm us up to 45 degrees for the weekend. We do need uh, moisture and it looks like it's headed our way, especially on Sunday. That's our best chance of rain and snow showers with a daytime high of 44. I'll check the rest of your seven day forecast in just a few minutes. Tom sounds good. Inflation is the highest it's been in 40 years, but how could raising interest rates help? We are checking with the experts, plus how that could impact your wallet after the break. Thank you.